Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So this video is inspired by some of the responses I got on the recent fat rope video. And I just wanted to clarify a few things because uh, that video seems to be getting a lot of negative feedback. I shouldn't say a lot because the proportion of likes is way, way more than the dislikes. I think it's like 350 likes right now compared to 15 dislikes or something like that. But I, I keep getting the same criticism over and over again and I can understand it because I too uh, was of the belief and I've tried every fire starter I'm gonna overlay some footage here of a test that I did using the plasmatic lighter uh, just to show you give you some ideas of what fire starters are out there and I explicitly expressed in that video that yes the market is saturated with all types of fire starting products which is why when Frank wanted me to review this I wasn't very excited about it to be honest I was a little skeptical whether or not this is something that the market is gonna have room for but because I respect the guy I respect the videos I respect his knowledge I decided to check it out now obviously there's a thousand and one ways that you can make your own fire starter you can go out into nature there's all types of natural tinders out there which are gonna allow you to get a fire going sometimes unless it's been raining for the last week um, there's still options then but it's gonna be much more challenging I mean by far the best natural material out there which is probably better than all of these fire starters if you can find it is birch bark nothing is gonna get a party rocking like some birch bark and some pitch but not everybody has that stuff at their disposal. And it's still not going to be as nicely compact as some of these other more synthetic forms of fire starting material. Another thing to keep in mind is that although primitive fire making is an excellent skill set to have, it shouldn't be something that you seek to do just for the sake of doing, especially in a situation where you're going to be under a lot of stress. The last thing you want to do is to exert more energy at a task when some sort of technology can help you do that activity faster. You can keep all your gear arrested at the primitive level, but then you're only ever going to function on a primitive level. And for some people, that's perfectly fine. They find that minimalist lifestyle to be enjoyable. While I personally can appreciate dabbling in it from time to time, I can speak for myself and probably many, many others in that it's not something I romanticize about having to do when I don't have to do it. And indeed, if you want a great fire starter, you just get a couple cotton rounds, stick some Vaseline in there, heat up some wax on the stove, dip it in the wax, and you got yourself uh, what I call a fire disc, and that's going to burn for a significant length of time. Now, you could just put one of those miniature cans of WD-40 in your bug out bag, and that is going to assist you in your fire starting as well as perform a lot of other functions. The fact is, there's a multitude of ways to start fires, and in the infamous words of Heath Ledger in his role of the Joker, everything burns. So if you don't want to stick a fat rope, there's a lot of other options out there for you. But this is just different. And it's not until you use it that you actually understand how cool it is. And the reason why it's so good is simply this. You get a very dense form of fuel that not only can you make a total fire with in a pinch to get you warm in a pinch and to give you enough time to heat up whatever wet natural tinder is around see a lot of these little fire starters that you see the flame isn't going to be that big with the exception of fat wood and things like that that you can puff up and you know maybe some uh, cotton balls and vaseline i mean really just that right there take a, a small bag of cotton and some vaseline and you're pretty much good to go but even still, this has benefits over that. It's less messy. Uh, there's still a lot more versatility to it. Just the ability to make that bird's nest like fire that you, you've seen me make there from just a small portion of one third of the rope. It allowed uh, for a great flame over a, a fairly large area to burn for just long enough to catch those logs on fire. Now, if I needed it to go continuously or if I was say out in the west coast or a place where it was raining for a significant length of time and I just needed to get the fire hot enough to start heating up the smaller wet stuff then this would allow me to do that I can't say the same for all fire starters now a couple other people made the comment that this has been something which was done in the past 
and I don't know how similar that was to what is demonstrated here, but I don't doubt that. That's uh, very much a possibility. I shopped around the internet a bit and I couldn't really find a whole lot, so if that was the case, the idea is a lost art form, so why not revive it? And another criticism was about the price, and it's $10 Canadian, which translates into about $7.5 American. Now, anybody who knows anything about trying to make a business and trying to produce something without relying on uh, sweatshop labor knows that there's, there's a significant cost and that the returns are very small. There's not a big profit margin in stuff like this, especially when you have to ship out each one individually. It takes a lot of time, so you know, you're your own labor source. And while your cost may be relatively low, this is not something that you're necessarily getting rich over. I hear a lot of comments say, well, I could make that, and indeed you probably could. You know, um, you could get uh, some rope, which was of a similar fibrous nature, and inundate it with wax, and try to add your own type of accelerant to it to make it catch a spark really well. And there you go, and then you could shrink wrap it in something. But you know, not everybody has the time or the inclination to do that. I mean, not everybody has half a day or even a day to burn to do something that you could buy for 10 or $20. Now, if you can make a significant length of it, then by all means, uh, you know, at least just say, hey, that's a good idea and thanks for the idea i'm going to try to make some instead of just you know totally shooting the guy's idea down and saying oh you could just make that well okay well but did you did you think about making it before you seen this video you know a simple thing to do would be to show your appreciation and say you know thanks for the idea i'm going to try to make some for myself unfortunately it's out of my price range that's all you got to say and that would be probably more well received by the manufacturer who would do whatever they could to try to adjust the price accordingly. I mean, it's just a matter of fact that if the majority of people aren't gonna buy something because it's priced too high, then you have to price it lower for it to be a viable business. So instead of getting all mad and indignant right away about this kind of thing, you know, just respect the fact that, hey, you, you learned something new, you seen something that you otherwise might not have seen, it wasn't for you and move on. That's all there is to it. Um, but again, I think this is a great idea and I think that if you give it a chance, you'll see what I mean. This is something which is gonna go in all of my bug out systems now. Uh, it's gonna go in my truck, it's gonna go in my bug out bag. I'm going to put one in my survival roll system, the survival roll 3.0, which is coming out pretty soon. And uh, I just think it's a, a great thing. I can support a fellow Canadian small business. So there you have it. So if you have any other questions about the product, feel free to uh, ask below. I'm not going to respond to any of the negative comments anymore. I think I've done my due diligence with regards to explaining my thought process, which brought me to uh, wanting to give this product high praise Anyways, folks, if you are interested in that fat rope stuff, don't forget to subscribe to Survival Instincts channel. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.